Many gun owners in the U.S. cite self-defense or concealed carry as their primary reason for owning a pistol. In recent years, the demand for concealed carry pistols has increased quite significantly, and manufacturers have been racing to put out the best concealed carry handguns they can. However, not every gun is suited for concealed carry. Some pistols may just be too big, while others may not have enough firepower to be effective. A good concealed carry pistol needs to be lightweight, have a small silhouette that does not print through your shirt, and have decent firepower. It also needs to be reliable and easy to shoot under pressure. Well, there are several pistols that fit this description, and you can find loads of videos listing the best concealed carry handguns on the market. However, no one tells you about the guns you should avoid. When it comes to self-defense and the protection of your loved ones, you need a concealed carry pistol that will have your back. And here is a list of the top five worst carry handguns that you shouldn't rely on. The Life Card I like the Life Card as an oddity. It's a well-made, durable, and reliable pistol. However, it's still a single-shot 22 lr that the company advised that you may not carry with a round in the chamber. That makes it a poor self-defense firearm. 22 lr is an anemic personal defense choice, but the real issue is the rimfire primer failing to ignite because rimfire just does that. The life card is somewhat slow to reload and has a trench sight and still requires two hands to operate. If I was James Bond sneaking through security, I might consider it. But I'm just John going to Taco Bell. Magnum Research Desert Eagle 50 AE It's not uncommon for concealed carry firearms to have a 7-round magazine capacity. It is uncommon for concealed carry guns with a 7-round magazine capacity to weigh 72 ounces empty. Popularized by the 1997 movie The Matrix, the handgun of Agent Smith is just too big and heavy to be carried concealed by the average person, unless you go around wearing a peacoat at all times. And even then, you're going to look a little lopsided. The solution, of course, is to carry two. Though, at that point, suspenders might be mandatory even with the toughest of gun belts. The sad part is that all of that weight and a good bit of engineering makes the Desert Eagle a much more easy-to-handle firearm than most would think. It's also extremely accurate. Raven MP25 the Raven MP25 is a direct blowback semi-automatic pistol chambered in 25 ACP. It is made from pot metal and what appears to be the cheapest chrome finish ever applied. Semi-automatic is a technical term here. Just don't rely on it regularly loading the next round. In fact, everything about this pistol is technical. Technically, it has sights. Technically, it has a safety. Technically, it has a finish. Technically, it's not the worst self-defense gun. But it's definitely up there. The gun seems to jam every other round or so. The 25 ACP round is anemic, but guns like the Beretta Tip provide you an ultra-small option with minimal recoil and centerfire reliability. In the Raven, you get an overly chunky and heavy pistol, thicker and seemingly larger than the Ruger LCP. The sights are really bad, the safety is far from that, and the gun isn't drop safe. So, be careful. Smith & Wesson X-Frame Yes, the 460 s and redefines what a powerful handgun cartridge is. Yes, 500 s and is impressively gigantic. Yes, both are not impossible to control with the soft grips extra-large frame, and integral porting of the average X-frame revolver. But, regardless of length, they're just too big for concealed carry. Even the short-barrel X-frame is just too bulky, and that's putting aside for a moment the fact that these cartridges really come alive with barrels longer than 8 inches. Snub-nosed 2 and 3 quarter inch versions offer a little more muzzle velocity than your average 45 Colt revolver with a 4 or 5 inch barrel while cranking up the recoil and muzzle blast to nearly unsustainable levels. 
I don't think they make the two and three quarter anymore. And there's a reason for that. It's not because it was a highly effective carry piece. FN FNX 45 Tactical If there's a better handgun than the FNX 45 Tactical for pulling out of the box, removing the thread protector, installing the 45 caliber silencer of your choice, and going to work, we don't know what it is. But the FNX 45 is certainly not a jack of all trades. It's a master of silent target elimination. Its 15 round magazine capacity and extended base plates mean you can shoot longer and reload faster. But these features are not going to be hidden very easily under a t-shirt. Put a red dot on it, attach a silencer and a weapon light, even better a Surefire or Steiner with an infrared laser to go with your white foes NVGs, and you have the best home defense handgun on the planet. Just don't expect to hide it at the grocery store or feel comfortable with it digging into your waist on a long road trip, unless that road trip is to the grocery store. Derringers. Derringers possess a certain kind of cool that can't be replicated by modern pistols. These small, double barrel pistols can be chambered in anything from 22 LR to 45 Colt. Some Derringers, like the Bond Arms Derringers, are brilliantly crafted guns. However, they are among the worst guns for concealed carry. You get two shots, a single action only trigger, teeny tiny grips, and super short barrels. The combination of these three features gives you a lot of recoil, a slow follow-up shot, and a very slow reload time. Derringers might be cool, but they are not a good choice for concealed carry. Glock 40 Like the FNX 45 Tactical, the Glock 40 MOS is a purpose-built firearm that excels at a few certain tasks. These tasks include ringing steel plates with authority at 200 yards and beyond bringing home dinner for the entire family for a week or more, and making Delta Elite owners feel inadequate when you show them your 15-round magazines. Unfortunately, these tasks do not include hiding the pistol on your body. Sure, you could do it with the proper attire, but you could do it a lot better with other firearms. Like the Glock 29, for example, if 10mm is your thing. Everyone, regardless of gender, should own a 10mm at some point, just like everyone should learn how to drive a stick shift, how to splint a dislocated shoulder, and how to build a fire. But knowing how to do these things is not the same as doing them every day. If your average day makes Ron Swanson look like Richard Simmons, maybe concealed carry of a G40 MOS is for you. 